This is chapter 21, example 3. What we have here is a timing diagram for this flip-flop. So this is a D flip-flop with asynchronous set and reset inputs on this. The issue here is to fill out this timing diagram. So everything on this timing diagram is provided except for the output of the flip-flop. So the output of the flip-flop is considered the Q output. Let's crank through this thing and see what we can do now it's like, the issue is is the it's a set and reset are asserted low so generally speaking when you look at these problems it will send somehow put the circuit into a known state and so what's happening here right here and that at that point this is an unknown state and so we're just putting unknown there uh, but at this point right here the set goes low at that point we know it's um, the output set now it's going to remain set until at least these clock edges here. So I'm going, to, I'm going to draw these clock edges down here so, so I don't forget. And I always do this because it helps make the problem more doable. At this point we've got an active clock edge. It is a rising edge triggered by flip flop. We're interested in the rising edge triggered. D is a zero, so there's a D is a zero. Looks good, I don't see S or R doing anything, they're both unasserted. Next thing here, we got a bunch of stuff going on this clock edge, and it's back at, at this clock edge, it's also still a zero, so we can fill that in. At this clock edge, it, it, it goes to a one. Done with that one, this clock edge goes back to zero. Actually, we can put those down there. Put some arrows in there. Okay, so this clock edge, it is a one. It remains a one, looking good. Okay, but here, what we have is this reset coming in before that clock edge here. So this is gonna cause it to reset. And at this clock edge, it doesn't set again, and we don't have to worry about this. There is an issue because the reset is on at the same time as the clock edge, and so the problem should state exactly what happens on that one, but since it's not trying to set right there, we don't have to worry about it. The reset turns off at this point. It re stays reset that whole time. Here's the clock edge, D's a one. So I'll put some notes in there. This clock edge, clock edge, D is a one. Okay, this clock edge, D is a zero. This clock edge, D is still a zero. It looks like we've got some uh, set action here. Okay, so the sets coming in right here, it remains at zero. Right there it sets, and it's still at zero, but <laughs> here we go. The asynchronous inputs do have precedence over the other one, so it's gonna matter here because it remains set, not a big deal there, but look at this clock edge here. We have a clock edge, the D is low, but it says that this asynchronous input has precedence and therefore it does not go low. So once again, here's a clock edge, a D is a zero, but this set input has precedence over it. Somewhat messy, but we're done, not that big a deal. When you do these problems, what you have to do is essentially keep an eye on clock edges of course but you need to be aware of when these asynchronous inputs are changing those will cause changes outside of the clock edge